Hi guys, welcome back to the second lesson from the poem We Are the Music Makers. Uh, before I move on to the third and the final stanza, uh, just wanted to let you know that in the first uh, video, there was a little pause around uh, 58 seconds where I thought of incorporating the video from uh, my favorite film, one of my favorite films at Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. Uh, I somehow technologically challenged till now over those, those little things. So I had inserted the link below in the comment section. So if you haven't checked it out, just check it out. I would like you to see that little scene and probably in your free time, how about reliving some of your happy moments of your childhood and going back and seeing Willy Wonka in the chocolate, chocolate factory once again, right? So before I move on, I, I thought I would mention that because I'm sure many of you would have missed it. I don't know exactly how visible that little comment of mine is in that. All right, we, uh, we have completed the first two stanzas. Uh, remember, we have, uh, what we have worked on is uh, the role of the music makers, uh, they are dreamers of dreams from uh, world forsakers and world losers. We have moved to them, calling them movers and shakers. And then we, when we moved on to the second stanza, we did talk about the, the timelessness of art. And again, along with it, the subversive nature of art and how probably uh, the work of artists over the past generations have been something which is timeless, uh, always remains part of our lives, even if the actual incident is dead and gone, long destroyed. Okay, probably we are going to revisit the same kind of idea in the third stanza. So before I go on the third stanza, I'm sure you've already got it numbered. It's very simple, 17 to 24. I did read it towards the end of the last lesson, but I would read it once again. Okay. We in the ages, lying in the buried past of the earth, built Nineveh with our sighing and Babel itself with our mirth, and overthrew them with prophesying to the old of the new world's worth. For each age is a dream that is dying or one that is coming to birth. Again, Layers of meaning, probably the same thought that uh, O'Shaughnessy has, and he's reiterating it, yes? And what is, if I ask you, what, what, do you, what would you put down, again, as probably his main thought in writing this poem? Simple question. Can you pen down a line? Just a simple line. What do you think is his main thought? Before we go into into some kind of detail with this stanza, just put down the main thought, yes. Uh, I, I've just put down mine, yes, right? Okay, so let's go back. We will revisit your main thought at the end of it, yes. Now, what does he say here? He says here that artists create history, yes. What do they do? They, they talk about things that have passed and things that will shape the future of the world. They talk about civilizations that are dead and buried. Remember, when I mentioned about uh, Troy, I mentioned about Kurukshetra, I mentioned about um, the lost world of the Atlantis. Again, we go back to hear uh, probably a Judeo-Christian tradition when he's talking about citing the examples of Nineveh and Babel. You know, like if you, if you Google them, you'll find every kind of detail about these two ancient cities. Uh, Nineveh was an ancient city in Assyria, which uh, Jonah the prophet, you know, he didn't mean to wish to go there um, and prophesy about it because it was meant to be destroyed. Nineveh was fated to be destroyed. He didn't want to go there because he didn't want to make this, this uh, absolutely painful prophecy. Babel, on the other hand, was a city where, I mean, where if you uh, followed the stories of the Bible, you will know that people built a tower. They wanted to build a tower to reach God. 
and <laughs> which was eventually destroyed by God in a very simple way. Because uh, the builders who were building the tower spoke different languages and there was total miscommunication. This massive miscommunication that took place uh, led to the tower crumbling down. Yes. Again, a tradition, a story. So what's interesting to note is the real Nineveh and Babel are in ruins, right? Yet, the description of these cities, the stories behind these cities, the stories of how they came about and why destruction was necessary, they remain true to us till today. They are examples, perhaps, of uh, man's failure. Man's failure and man's pride to achieve something and later on man's failure. So if I put it in another, some other words, I can call it as testaments of man's folly and examples of uh, where uh, the power uh, of the belief that, uh, that transcends human thought. They are examples of how wrong we are when we believe that we are invincible. So, but what is the poet's intention here? The poet's intention is very clear. The, the cities are destroyed, buried, long lost. But these stories, the tales, the little story about miscommunication, the builders that led to the fall of the Tower of Babel, or that Jonah didn't want to go there and make a prophecy. These stories have outlived the actual city-states. And that, dear students, is the timelessness of art. Remember, I did mention to you my, my favorite author, uh, poet, John Keats, and his Grecian urn. He said that the urn uh, is an object that's, and uh, images on it are eternal. Yes. And there's one example which I always cite is of uh, the image of the lovers sitting under the tree, spending some quality time together. He said the, the actual two whom Keats saw when he described them as images on the Gracian urn would have been dead and gone. But for him, the images remain the same young lovers because that piece of urn where they have been etched will last forever. Very much like, you know, like I'm talking to you, I feel, just take out your album. You're at home. Take out your album. Go through the photographs of your childhood. Even photographs are work, I believe, of artists, right? Pictures. So, I mean, you, you're grown, right? But in that little photograph of yours on your first birthday, that memory will never be lost. And where do you preserve it? You preserve it in that little album of yours, which will be there for eternity. Right? Just a passing thought. Right. So let's, let's come back to the third stanza. Uh, built Nineveh with our sighing and Babel itself with our mirth, and overthrew them with prophesying to the old of the new world's worth. So artists tell us about the histories of cities and lands of the past. They also tell us how these places came to nothing and the reasons why they were destroyed, the reasons why they just cease to exist. Yes. Uh, so they create, they also destroy. Why? Why does this process continue of creation and destruction? Because this process will lead us to carve a new road ahead, keeping in mind the follies of the past. The past will have to be destroyed, but we need to keep the stories of the past alive so that we don't repeat the mistakes of the past, of present, can become of more worth. Yes. So artists, what 
remember we are moving to another very important role for the artists the artists here are prophets i won't use a, such a strong word as messiah but they're prophets because what do they do they they tell us what the past has been and by telling us what the past has been they are telling us also how to move forward and as we move move forward to achieve the goals that we wish to probably it is also helping us in designing what kind of future we wish to create for ourselves you know as i'm talking about this poet prophet it takes me to someone who i believe to be probably the greatest poet prophet of our land take a guess anyone yeah can't hear your answer i'm sure you're right yes it is the one and only rabindranath tagore can we deny him not being a prophet can we deny the fact that he dreamt of a world where knowledge is free where the world has not been broken up into fragments by narrow domestic walls where words come out from the depth of truth can we deny the fact that he is not a poet prophet just something for you to mull over yes from here we move on to the last two lines of this poem very very important for each age is a dream that is dying or one that is coming to birth how do you transcend this each age is a dream that is dying or one that is coming to birth the role of the artist is manifold perhaps extremely unique for not only do they recreate the past to bring it to life they make the past so real that it becomes a part of our present and as it becomes a part of our present it helps us to understand our follies our shortcomings which then equips us to design our future keeping the memories alive so if i might put it again the memories of the past are images of the present to create the world of the future minus the shortcomings that we have realized needs to be addressed so the present always evolves out of the ashes of the past we cannot deny that you know many a times we have heard children ask the question why do we have to study history we need to study history because we need to know our past unless we know our past we will not understand how we have evolved into the present that we have and also then what are the things that we need to avoid to make our future brighter right so the present evolves out of the ashes of the past and the future is then brought to fruition through our thoughts of the present right so what does the poet prophet do very simply it knits the three worlds together interwoven together the past the present and the future so makes sense it is a very very deep thought the three worlds are knitted together the past the present and the future now um also shonesi does not retreat into a dream world 
he's not talking about a dream world we live in under trees and there are elves and gnomes and i look for pleasure where the world cannot give me any he's not an escapist like remember i told you in the very beginning probably there is a part of romanticism in him like wordsworth like baudelaire like keats yes there is that like uh, rossetti yes there is but the difference is and the main crux of his argument being that the poets belong to the real world yes and perhaps because uh this real world is so unpoetical therefore it requires the uh, faith the belief of these artists to transform and keep alive everything that is meaningful and worthwhile so they have these artists have the special gift to go beyond the facade and bring out that which is a real worth you know when you take out when you pick up the oysters you need to uh open it out and remove the pearl which is within so the work of an artist are like those pearl divers bring out the oysters open it and remove the pearl so find out everything that is worthwhile which we have forgotten and take away the facade of that which is delusional yes so what if i asked you then do you think is the predominant tone of the poem see by the very title we are the music makers you'll say fine it's a lyric yes it is but there is a definite tone to the poem an ode ode in praise of artists and music makers so what is the predominant tone of the poem is it something which is melancholy is it something which is uh, depressing or is it something that is more appreciative is it a celebration of art is it a celebration of all the creative pursuits that mankind works with yes so three stanzas and these three stanzas uh, if we go through it now once again uh, you will definitely uh, think about what kind of questions can one ask very simple this is uh, we are the music makers has been included in the isc syllabus for the very first time uh, and the kind of question if i think of the question uh, uh, the first thing that comes to my mind is how does the poet uh, o'shaughnessy create an exclusive world for the music makers and what is his promise here in this ode what is his promise here in this ode what kind of world does he create exclusive world does he create in the music makers or another question if we can take it straight from the lines here um for each age is a dream that is dying or one that is coming to birth what is the role of the music makers in fulfilling this trust that o'shaughnessy has penned down in his poem the role of the music makers in creating an age because of an age where each age is a dream that is dying or one that is coming to birth what is the role of the artist in this sphere or if i say justify how the music makers are dreamers of dreams or movers and shakers now whichever question you get students 
you have to write about the appraisal of the artists and their dedication to art throughout the ages. It's a very, if you go back now to the poem, from the very first line, the message is clear. It is dedicated to artists and to their timeless creations, to the music makers who are the dreamer of dreams. It appeals to artists across different realms of all over the world. There is deliberately no mention of a particular art form. And that's why it is universal in its appeal. So the artist's uh, only relationship is to what? Is to his art. Yes. And that's why the artists are harbingers of a creative rebellion. In otherwise, a society which is dull and probably uh, devoid of any fluidity. But so, what is the role of art? Art is the force which awakens people's minds. It inspires them to be creative. But there is also a statutory warning that he gives. I'm repeating it for your sake. And what is the statutory warning? The statutory warning is being an artist is difficult. Why is it difficult? Because they are often misunderstood by people. They are termed losers and forsakers. But are they really so? No, they are not. They are termed so because they live lonely existence. They, they are trying to look for a meaning behind this facade of society that we are involved with. So to find a new meaning, they move away from this humdrum existence. They move away where they are desolate streams. They move away where they are not in touch with the common man. Yes. And you must also remember, people like you and I, are not able to interpret the mood of the artists, their expressions, till we sit and think about their work. So, uh, you know, this is a, it's a very common, uh, common sort of, I can say, uh, the dependency of the artists on goodwill. Yes, uh, since time immemorial, uh, artists have sacrificed, uh, sacrificed, uh, excluded themselves from society, isolated themselves from this human error and strife to find the core of existence, to find the true meaning and beauty in human nature and the world around. So to be aloof, to be secluded is vital in the creation of art. Because, you know, it is so ironical to say this seclusion gives them the space. The seclusion gives them the space to utilize their creativity and imagination and then to produce something which is, which will appeal and become universal because their work is forever. So uh, what are the roles? What are the roles that they have to fulfill? Movers and shakers, movers and shakers. What's the first thing that comes to your mind with movers and shakers? A rebellion, a coup d'etat. Yes. A rebellion against what? Revolting against conventional existence. A change in status quo. Especially that of art. Yes. See, art never, I repeat, art never confines itself to socio-political, religious, cultural boundaries. It cannot do so. It never does. So what does it do? 
it unites people through what give me one word for it if i were in class i would i would play a hangman yes it is a 1 uh, 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 letter word beginning with i ending with n yes yes it unites people with their imagination it inspires imagination yes they shape public opinion and help us to create a better world yes and a change a newness which can be brought about yes and the poet goes on to celebrate this creation the fantasy the ability of the artist to build something new at the same time uh with this gift of imagination which helps them to manifest a new world build new cities create a glorified empire out of the stories that they they write about they bring about new realizations in the minds of people yes so another very important line and i'm repeating it the work of art will always outlive any materialistic possession cities will be destroyed will be reduced to a rubble buildings will fall but the work of art men are bound to die yes wordsworth is no more tagore is no more but we still talk about the daffodils we still talk about where the mind is without fear because the work of art and the lives they create the thought that they create lives forever and that those are the sources of our inspiration and those are the sources uh, the the pieces of uh, inspiration that helps us to create a future so where do you think the poet has put the artists on the poet has put the artists in on the highest pedestal and call them immortal thereby thereby asserting or reasserting the truth that even though they are losers and forsakers ultimately what are they they are the dreamers they are the movers and shakers of the world that is a reality the birth of a new age the birth of a new world the birth of a new dream we owe it to the artists sounds good yeah so whatever question you get either it is to write about the exclusive world of the music makers or how are the music makers the uh, the two end of the spectrum they are called the losers and forsakers and they also call movers and shakers how does the poet juxtapose these roles or how do, how does the poet in this poem bring about the uh, uh, talk about the position of the artist being uh, one that brings together the past and the present and then talks about the future so whatever kind of question you get you are talking about the appreciation and role of artists uh it is but uh, i hope you understood i really hope that you 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 pen down uh, my thoughts i would also like you to uh, put down your thoughts and try writing a uh a good answer a good response to the appreciation of uh, arthur william edgar o'shaughnessy's poem but before i end for today uh like i told you in the beginning uh when uh, after he passed away at a very young age of 36 uh 
uh, Palgrave when he was when the first uh, book of collected poetry was being compiled they reduced uh, the ode yes ode remember is is a celebration yes they reduced the ode uh, no celebration of uh, of of artists can be just for three stanzas but somehow they wanted to reduce it like i told you he was not in the same class as the other poets of that era so they reduced the nine stanza poem into a three stanza but today i think it is imperative after we have just gone through the immense thought the immense uh, you can see immersion of uh ideas that the poet had uh, soaked himself in about the role of artist that is best fitting that we read the entire ode once so probably the only time when you will hear all the nine stanzas i take the liberty uh we are the music makers and we are the dreamers of dreams wandering by lone sea breakers and sitting by desolate streams were losers and world forsakers on whom the pale moon gleams yet we are the movers and shakers of the world forever it seems with wonderful deathless ditties we build up the world's great cities and out of a fabulous story we fashion an empire's glory one man with a dream at pleasure shall go forth and conquer a crown and three with a new song's measure can trample a kingdom down we in the ages lying in the buried past of the earth build in ever with a sighing and babble itself in our mirth and overthrew them with prophesying to the old of the new world's worth for each age is a dream that is dying or one that is coming to birth a breath of our inspiration is the life of each generation a wondrous thing of our dreaming unearthly impossible seeming the soldier the king and the peasant are working together in one till our dream shall become their present and their work in the world be done they had no vision amazing of the goodly house they are raising they had no divine foreshowing of the land to which they are going but on one man's soul it hath broken a light that doth not depart and his look or a word he hath spoken brought flame in another man's heart and therefore today is thrilling with the past days late fulfilling and the multitudes are enlisted in the faith that their fathers resisted and scorning the dream of tomorrow are bringing to pass as they may in the world for its joys and its sorrow the dream that was scorned yesterday but we with our dreaming and singing ceaseless and sorrowless we the glory about us clinging of the glorious futures we see our souls with high music ringing o oh men it must ever be that we dwell in our dreaming and singing a little apart from ye for we are a far with the dawning and the suns that are not yet high and out of the infinite morning interpret you hear us cry how spite of your human scorning once more god's future draws nigh and already goes forth the warning that ye of the past must die great hail we cry to the comers from the dazzling unknown shore bring us hither your sun and your summers and renew our world as of yore you shall teach us your songs new numbers and things that we dreamed not before ye in spite of a dreamer who slumbers and a singer who sings no more goodbye and see you soon thank you